So we need to talk about updates, which are a big topic. You would think that it wouldn't be so complex, but it, it honestly is. Do you see at the top, we're in the dashboard, and at the top we've got like a little spinning arrow, and mine says number four, yours may have more or less, but if you click on that spinning arrow, this will take you to the WordPress updates screen, which is basically inside of the dashboard updates. The screen can be pretty daunting. It's got a lot going on here, perhaps, but we will talk about updates. So we'll say yes. Strip. You might be logged out of your site. You want to log back into your site. So here, thoughts on updates. Um, updates are important, but could be dangerous. In the general terms, updates are good because you deal with updates all the time. If you've got an iPhone or an Android or a Windows computer or a Mac computer, every once in a while you've got updates. If you had a few years ago an iPhone, you had iOS 6 or 7 and then it went on to iOS 8 and suddenly the icons changed so much and everyone hated it. If you were on the Android phone, same sort of thing. At one point your icons and your features looked a certain way and then you did an update suddenly everything was different and you hated it. Well, the thing is that updates are important, but they could be dangerous or, at the very least, annoying because things change. Well, the reason for updates, security is the big one. Security fixes and new features. Uh, your phone is made out of software. WordPress is software, your, your, your Mac computer has software, this stuff needs updates. It's changing, it's evolving, it's updating, and people are trying to see what bugs it has, what security flaws it has. And WordPress, because it's one of the largest ways, I believe it's the largest way, the most popular, that is, way to make a website, 25% market share, there's a lot of people looking at WordPress to exploit it to break it, to see what's wrong with your site and break in. So if the current version of WordPress is, let's say, version 4, and you're running version 3, because it works and I don't want to break anything, well, between 3 and 4, version 3 and 4, someone might have figured out that there's broken code here to try to break into your site. And those that have upgraded to version 4 of WordPress no longer have that vulnerability. That broken code has been fixed and those that haven't upgraded to the new version are vulnerable. So one of the big reasons for security updates, I mean for updates, is to fix security issues. And you get new features too. WordPress is evolving and giving you new capabilities. You see that also on your phone, you see that on your computer. Uh, you know, on your computer, you might have had a computer that you started off with Windows 7, and then you got Windows 8, and it had different features new system and so forth. Maybe you bought a brand new Mac and it had Mac OS 10.9 and now you've got 10.10. .10. New features, new security and so forth. WordPress is the same. WordPress started out at 1.0 at one point and now it's at 4.5.3 or so. When we talk about updates with WordPress, we have uh, three things to think about updating. We have WordPress core, we have themes, we have plugins. 
These are most commonly the three parts of WordPress. WordPress core is the basic software or the, the foundational software, the foundation of your site. All that your site is built on top of is the WordPress core. And again, it started off at 1.0 and it evolved. It was 4.4 a couple of months ago, it's 4.5 now. We can go look up at wordpress.org and it'll tell you there everything that's changed, all the bugs that have been fixed, all the security problems that have been patched up. All of this stuff is public and can be, can be looked up. The next thing is themes, the design of your site. The design of your site also once in a while changes your theme. So wherever you got your theme from, it's also code, it's also software, and people are trying to figure out how to break into it. And so the theme authors, because WordPress is so popular, they have to be on top of it too. And they have to figure out, oh, my code is incomplete here, or broken, or someone told me it's broken, or I'm, I'm getting reports that it's broken, I need to fix it. So then a new version is published, and then you get a notification up here. You've got a new update. And lastly, there are also plugins. The extra features of your site. The e-commerce aspect that we'll be talking about next time, by default, WordPress does not have a shopping cart. That's an extra feature. It's a plugin. We're using the plugin duplicator to give us the extra feature of backups. There's a built-in backup system in WordPress. It's under Tools Export, but it's pretty terrible. There's a much better one, Duplicator. It's an extra plugin. It's an extra feature. And it is also subject to updates, to security vulnerabilities and such. I put them in this order because this is the order that I would recommend to do your updates. I would recommend you first do the WordPress core update because that's like the foundation of this building. Everything is built on top of it. And if that foundation isn't sound, none of the rooms on top will be sound. So we should do our core WordPress updates first. Notice it's the very first thing on top here. You have the latest version of WordPress. Future security updates will be applied automatically. So we, we have the latest one. Maybe a 4.5.4 will come out later, or maybe a 5.0 will come out next week, I don't know. But this is the latest version so far, and oftentimes version numbers are like this, something dot something dot something. So, let's say latest. is 4.5.3. The, uh, the first number here is the big version number. That usually means there's a huge change. When something goes from 3.0 to 4.0, it's a huge change internally. I'm leading us toward, well, why is this dangerous? Because I've seen examples of clients that they've had, uh, you know, wor a version WordPress version 3 and then they tried to update to version 4 and everything broke. Your shopping cart doesn't work anymore, their slideshow doesn't work anymore, all of these things don't work anymore because the latest version of the software is incompatible with their, with their old plugins, their old themes. Let's say we updated the WordPress core. Well, the next goal would be the themes. And notice in this screen it's the third item. I wish they would rearrange it. The theme would be the next thing that I would think about updating. Because that's the design and the style of the site. I would want to update that next. And then the third thing would be the plugins the extra features that build on top of your basic features would be the next update. Yes? So if a post like Game Force knows that WordPress, an update to WordPress is coming down the pipe, don't you 
things that maybe they put out of things for their games ahead of time, just in case of something like that doesn't happen? It sounds like the opposite. The problem is that, um, you know, like the WordPress software is being updated, and we see here 4.5.3. That little number of three means it was like a very recent change. So changes happen on a, on a regular basis in between a long time or a short time. So they can't, these authors and such, theme authors, can't quite be on top of every change until it kind of happens sometimes. So it's kind of a cat and mouse thing or which came first, the chicken or the egg, which comes first, the theme update or the WordPress update. It's, this is just a, a difficult thing to, to keep on top of sometimes. This is the order to do it, but then we still need to say problems. Uh, one of the big problems is going from a major version to a major version of WordPress, which means if I've got 3.5.2 and in my dashboard it says, why don't you get 4.5 right now? You know, if I've got 3.9.2 or whatever, and it's saying you need 4.5, that could be a big problem because your, your software, all of the other plugins and such are built upon the an older version. And if you go to the newer version, have you ever experienced on your home computer, for example, you had a certain computer and all your stuff worked like your printer and your scanner. And then you bought a brand new computer and that printer doesn't work anymore. It used to work for 10 years on my old computer and I just bought a brand new computer and it doesn't work anymore. And that happens also with that respect. Older stuff sometimes doesn't work with newer stuff. Um, theme updates could, I have to say, will wipe out your custom code. So if I go to the appearance editor and go in here and edit my code to exactly what I want, and there's a new version of my theme, the th that theme update will erase my custom code. Use child themes to prevent this. Or the custom CSS feature of Jetpack. Or if your theme allows. This is this one's hard to explain. I, I don't I can't show it to you right now because it's gonna depend on the theme. Some themes, under like the settings of the theme somewhere, there's going to be a special section, a special box for you to write custom code. Usually that is safe. This one here of the editor is not. But depending on your theme, you may have a specific custom code section. And oftentimes that one is safe because it, it kind of backs up that code in a different part of the database. This one, this is a very like raw editor. It doesn't back it up. It, there's, it's like one of the parts that WordPress really needs to, to update. This feels the same as in WordPress 1.0 from 10 years ago. They haven't really changed this section. and It's so valuable to, for advanced features, but they haven't really worked with it. Oh, Victor. Yes. I'm sure in your company you have so many clients, right? Uh -huh. So when there's like a new update, do you go back to each one of them and update every single one? Sir? Depending uh, if with the client we have a contract to do so, because it's all about the contract. They hired us to do X, Y, and Z, and we have it all in the contract. If they didn't hire us to do updates, we have to wash our hands and walk away, because we're not going to be responsible for doing these updates and breaking their site. But if in the contract we have there, we will do a monthly update session. Then we'll log in, we'll go through the process, we'll do these updates in the safe way, which I'll talk about in a moment. 
because they hired us to do it. But we're not just simply going to go back to a client out of the kindness of our hearts, even though we're kind people. But it's in not in the contract, so we have to follow the contract. You want to eat? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> So this is another thing to think about. Theme updates. Use child themes. Now, child themes is a complex thing. If you do a quick search for WordPress child themes, you're going to see plenty of tutorials and videos and commentaries and lots of people are going to tell you how to do it. WordPress, WordPress officially will tell you how to do it too, but their version is pretty technical. They're going to tell you, go to these folders, edit this code, do this, do that. It's a little complex. Child themes, however, it says, a child theme is the theme that inherits the functionality and styling of another theme called the parent. Child themes are the recommended way of modifying an existing theme. It's also going to tell you over here somewhere, um, if you modify the theme directly and it's updated, then your modifications may be lost. By using a child theme, you will ensure that your modifications are preserved. It's like a little copy, it's a little clone of an existing theme. The 2015, the 2015 theme exists, and if you make any changes here, they go away when you do the theme update. But if you follow the process of a child theme, you're going to have basically like a kind of a copy of your theme. You can make changes to the copy, and when you do updates, the parent theme is updated, and only the necessary changes trickle down to the child. It doesn't affect any of your custom code. Sounds amazing, but it is a little complex. What I'm seeing more often, however, if you get a premium theme, it comes with the child theme template as well. This is becoming so useful and popular and necessary that a good theme author now is also going to sell you, usually as part of the package, the child theme. You install the child theme, work with the child theme, and when updates come, the update comes to the parent, and only the necessary changes trickle down to the child, and your custom code is fine. So choose, use child themes to prevent this. Be on the lookout for themes that include a child theme. Those are the better themes. If it doesn't come with a child theme, you make any custom changes like that, they're going to be gone. So that URL was um, Codex? It's WordPress.org. WordPress.org. Or Codex.wordpress.org. And I just did a search, uh, a search, and then it popped up number one. If you use the child theme, is it going to make the site slower, like heavier? No, because the child theme really only has the necessary files. It only has, for example, the color styles and so forth. It doesn't have a copy of every picture. It doesn't have a copy of every product. It basically only has copies of like the individual changes, the styles and the colors and those things that are not heavy. Yes? So if you were creating a new website for a new client, and you were going to use a child theme, would that be very complex and time-consuming for you? Like, would it cost more money? No, it's not, it's not really that much more time-consuming, and it's already part of usually our original proposal and package. So it wouldn't be something that we add extra for more, for more fee. It's part of the original that we say, here's what we're going to do, and we're going to use child themes. And it's included in the original proposal and such. Because when we do this for a client, we know those issues that are going to happen of updates. So in the beginning, we, we say early on, we should do it this way. Theme updates will wipe out your custom code. And then plugins with plugin updates confirm that the plugin update is compatible with your current version of WordPress. Sometimes plugins, the author loses interest, doesn't update them anymore. And they're still out there, and you can still download them. And let's say I've got a really cool Twitter plugin that shows all my tweets on the home page animated. Mm -hmm. And it's set to 1.5, and they haven't updated it in two years. Well, that's been two years of innovations that have been happening everywhere else. 
and they never programmed theirs for the future, of course. So when I update to version 4 of WordPress core, and my Twitter plugin is still at 1.5 stuck there, it may no longer be compatible, it may no longer work, and it may be insecure, because that's been two years that someone has tried to figure out how to break it. If there's a problem with it, if there's some sort of exploit they can take advantage of. It'll tell you there when you're doing your updates, um, when you're looking at the actual plugin somewhere, right here. Compatibility with WordPress 4.5. 100% report to the audience. So, if it's not compatible then with your WordPress, it might not be a plugin you want to use anymore. Because it might be, it might be compromised. I, uh, one of the scariest things to do in WordPress, we'll do this later, is to look at a plugin called Redirection, um, where it keeps track of all the broken links uh, and all the traffic trying to get to your site. And the scary thing to look at is seeing the people trying to see if there's a hole in your website. Looking at these logs that show someone's trying to access this plugin that they know is broken. Ten hits to this plugin. So people are actively doing that, looking to see what's broken on, on a site. There, there you can look up a... you can easily look up you know, list of broken plugins, and hackers are going to use that and check every WordPress site that they find. Are these sites in, are these sites using this old version of this plugin? Great, they're vulnerable. I'm going to log in and hack into it right now. You can prevent that by keeping up to date with your updates. I've said a lot of negatives here because it's a long answer. Let me show you the process that I would do this for a real client. Because yes, this is this is a lot of trouble and effort and it could break your site. If my site works perfectly now, I don't want to touch it. You could be letting yourself open to vulnerabilities if you don't do updates. But don't do updates right away. We have to talk about it. Here's how I would do it. Step one, back up your site. With Duplicator, for example. Duplicator makes a perfect copy of your site at this point. So if I make a perfect copy, do my updates, and everything's broken, I just go back to my Duplicator backup, and at least my site's back. So I would back up the whole site via Duplicator, then update WordPress core. Update it to the latest version of the WordPress, Test the site. Check if your shopping cart still works like it's supposed to. Check if your links still work. Check if these features still work. If it does, then back up the site again. At this point now, you have a copy of your site now. We've accomplished this step. Because the, on these next steps, we could have failures. The next step would be update your theme. Update that theme. Test the site again. Whoops, I updated my theme. My whole site's broken. Well, at the very least, I have a backup to take me back to this point where I had updated my WordPress and it's secure up to this point. But then I, I see that that new th I see that that theme is not compatible anymore, or there's a problem or something. I have a backup up here. Little segue right here, just um, advice. Have one active theme and one backup theme. What I mean by that is, on our current site, we have 2016, SATU, 2015, 2014. 
all of these themes could get updates. And all of these themes are going to be begging for updates even if you're not even using them. So if I'm never going to use 2014, it's still going to check back to the WordPress mothership every once in a while, using up your site resources to check if there's a new version. 2015 also, I'm never going to use that theme, but every few weeks or months or days or something, it's going to check, is there a new version? Is there a new version? Is there a new version? And it's going to be using up your, your site's resources. I recommend have your main theme and one backup theme. Usually we have like an interesting theme like Satu, and then I would have as a backup the default basic WordPress official theme, 2016. Anything besides that, you're just wasting resources on your site, slowing down your site. If we had a child theme, then I would see Satu Child Active, Satu Parent Inactive, and 2016 Inactive, and that'd be fine also. The child theme, the parent theme, and the one backup theme. Anything besides that, you're wasting your resources. One active theme and its child, if you have one. And one backup theme. The reason I have the one backup theme is, in the, in the case that sometimes a, a site gets hacked, that's because the, the code of the theme might have been hacked somehow. Well, if you deactivate that theme and activate your backup theme and delete the old theme, it deleted the code that was hacked. That could be a possible way to fix some issues of getting hacked. And I've personally done it for at least one client. That the theme was old and it got hacked. Well, switching to a, to a different theme that was newer and more secure fixed it. Yes, the theme is completely different design and such, but I think the client was happier to have a secure site with a different theme than the theme that they pick, but with a hacked site. So we have to fix that. How do you deactivate the suggested themes? The suggested themes? If you click on, uh, they're not suggested, they're installed. But if you click on the theme, you will see at the bottom right, delete. Okay, so then that's two out of three possible updates. What's the third possible update? Plugins. Update plugins. Here's some items for there. Start with the most important plugin first. For example, when we talk about the shopping cart plugin next week, that's one of the most important things on my site. If that's not working, I'm not selling. So when I do these updates, I'm going to go through this whole process, then I'm going to get to this point, and it's asking me to update the shopping cart and my Twitter widget and this and that. I'm going to update my shopping cart plugin, the most important plugin, first. Because if it's happened once at least before, and to me that's that's enough times where I've simply said select all, update all, and it's going to go in order A, B, C. And what if it got to a certain point, jetpack, and then the update fails? Well, I wasted my time doing these updates here until it failed here. I have to restore the site or do other things. So I don't like to do select all and have it do it just alphabetically takes a little bit more time, but I like to go in here and decide which is my most important plugin here, update it. Based on the ones we have here, Jetpack is one of the important ones because it has, it's like the Swiss Army knife of plugins. It can do many things. So in our case here, I would do Jetpack first, and then I'd have to decide after that but when we have the shopping cart, that's the most important one. I would do that update. 
I would say update plugins. Check the site. Continue <coughs> with the next plugins. If all my plugin updates work, then update the site again. Yes, it's a lot of steps and sub steps and things to do. Again, are you sure you want to become the next Amazon? Because these are the things, again, that we do for real clients because now we're in charge of that. Amazon has a team of people working 24 hours a day all over the world keeping Amazon up for 200 countries in the world. Walmart has that. Target has that. Nike has that. All of these shopping cart sites, these big ones, they've got people that are paid to do this nonstop, all of this behind the scenes stuff. Now you're going to need to do it. You're going to need to run your business and your website, and now you need to keep these things in mind or hire someone to do it. Because behind the scenes, there's a lot to do and a lot that could go wrong. Not trying to scare you, of course, just trying to show you this is the reality of it. When you're your own business, you have to handle more of it. So again, I'm going to put these notes in the folder at the end of the day, but here's the general discussion on updates. We will do them in just a moment, but any, any questions at this point? All right, so ideally we would make a duplicator backup. I won't, because if anything goes wrong, we can go back to the update. We can go back to the backup that we had from the beginning of the day. At the top it doesn't say that there's any new version of WordPress, so I don't need to do that update. If something's wrong with your site, reinstalling the WordPress core could fix it. Um, the next item would be themes. There are no themes to update, but like I said, have you heard of that term actually? An heir and a spare. That comes from the kings from the kings in Europe. You know, you want to have an heir to inherit your throne, and you want to have a spare, just in case we, they die before they're 30 years old. So we want to have something like that for our, our own site. Let's go over first to the appearance themes. And this is where we're going to uh, keep only the, the themes that we need. We need the heir and the spare. We don't need the 2014 and the 2015 themes. Well, I want my two interesting themes. So for 2015, click on theme details. There's all about it. Version 1.5. And then in the bottom right, delete it. It'll confirm. Click OK. Delete 2014 also. Now I've got the two themes. If I had a child theme, that would, of course, I would leave it there as well, but I don't have a child theme. I didn't set it up, and none of these came with one. Let me go back to my um, updates screen. Nothing to do in updates, and I've weeded out the themes I don't need that are using up my resources. Next step, then, is plugins. In these plugins that I have, the way I would do it, <coughs> Jetpack first, then Yoast, then Duplicator, then Akismet. This one has a lot of sub-features. I want to make sure that one's updated first. This one also has a lot of complex things. Second, this one's not as complex, but important. Third, <coughs> the Akismet, we're not, we're not using it at the moment, but it's valuable for your for your uh, spam comments to block them. And also what could help you to decide what to do first. This is from 404 going to 411. It's not such a big change. This small number here is often a small change to the plugin. This second number is a bigger change, and this one is a huge change. 
if you've got your your if you've got your Twitter plugin from 1.0 to 4.0, you've missed a lot in between. <coughs> Doing that update might cause your site to become really weird because there's a lot a lot of new code. 3.32, 3.34, little change. 1.112, 1.114, little change. 3.110 to 1.11, little change. This one's a slightly bigger change, that's why I want to do it first. That number there is bigger here. So go ahead and select Jetpack and then click Update Plugin. This will connect back to the WordPress.org server. Download it, install it. It's taking a little bit. Some happen quickly, some a little longer. Again, Jetpack is a big plugin. It's got a lot of features, so it felt like it took a little bit. I want to then return to WordPress updates page and do the next one, one at a time. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it's boring, but I, it's happened once, maybe twice, <coughs> and that was enough for me that I just let it do all alphabetically and it didn't work how I thought, but never again. So I'm doing it individually. Yoast. Update that. Then duplicator, then akismet. <clears throat> yes? Where it says, um, according to the author, does that mean they've done their validation? I mean, does that, that's kind of big. Yes, exactly. The author, whoever created this plugin, they, in theory, checked Everything. that their plugin works with WordPress and they say that it's compatible. It should be a verified. Verif verif there should be verification. Of according to the record. Yes. Duplicator next, and then a Kismet last. If we go back there, eventually then I have nothing more to update and my site is the most modern and the most secure. At the very least, I have any, you know, security issues fixed. I might have new features of the software. I would go back to the, to the front end. I would visit site and, you know, browse the site, make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. That could be a time-consuming thing. And if I see any problem, well, the last thing that I did was I updated the, the plugin and everything broke. So maybe I shouldn't update that plugin. Or maybe I need to do the roll back to a previous update. And unfortunately, it's difficult to. Let's say I updated A Kismet from 1.2 to 2.0 and it didn't work anymore. There's no button really that says revert back to 1.0. It's kind of a complex process. I can't really talk about it. So that's why at the very least what I can say is while you're doing these things it's safe to do these backups. Take a moment to make a duplicator backup and if any problem happens, let's say I did, let's say I did these updates of my plugins, the site's broken, well go back to the last backup that I made and maybe send an email to the plugin author, go to their contact form, complain to them, and uh, maybe they need to update their plugin to the latest version of WordPress as well. So that was our discussion of updates. It's uh, complex, but updates are useful and good, and if you have precautions, if you have the safety net of backups, uh, updates are, are good to do. And through whatever ways that I'm saying and advising and such, these things work. Although recently there was one example that everything that we tried was a dead end because they had such an old version of WordPress and the server was so limited and it was, you know, we, we can't do updates to this site. We have to leave it or else it totally breaks. So we had to 
do the best that we could and tell the client, you need to invest at some point to update this website to the latest version of WordPress because all your stuff is so old, you could be vulnerable. It works, but you could be vulnerable. They haven't gotten back to us yet. So, uh, any general questions at this point? Yes? I don't know. It could be many issues of what's vulnerable. If you've got an outdated shopping cart, in theory, sure, someone could use that to somehow steal money from you or break into your account somehow. I can't exactly say what kind of problems you'll have, because I don't try to find those problems. But uh, the short answer is that, yeah, there could be problems. And if it's a popular plugin, that means people are trying to look. Is there a hole in this software? Right, any, other, any other questions? Let's take one more break, and then we'll talk more WordPress. So it's 8.20. We'll be back at 8.30.